The Children's Bible Hour presents Summer Tour 92. Kids telling kids about God's love. Boys and girls for Jesus, this our earnest prayer. Boys and girls for Jesus, home and school and play. And everywhere we'll tell the world of life in Jesus. He is our home. There is all you need in Jesus. Won't you come along? And we are so happy for all of those of you that are here in the auditorium. We also welcome all of you who will be viewing this by videotape in the months and perhaps even the years to come. Isn't it great that God has given us some of these wonderful ways that we can share the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ? And I'd like to take just a moment to bow our heads and commit our part of this program to the Lord in prayer because without Him and His Holy Spirit working through us and the kids, it will all be in vain. Lord Jesus, thank you for your love to us. Thank you for dying, for rising again. Thank you for new life that we can have in Jesus Christ. And I thank you for the 50 years that you've given the ministry of Children's Bible Hour to be a blessing throughout the world. And now we pray for this particular service. Oh, we pray that we will be hidden behind the cross of Jesus Christ. We do not want to lift ourselves up. We do not want to lift up even the ministry of Children's Bible Hour. We want to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, for it is in his name that we pray it. Amen. I'm Uncle Charlie. I'll sort of tie the loose ends together, but the important ones are all, well, in front and behind me. I want to take a quick moment to introduce our accompanists. At the keyboard is Ken Lewis, who's been not only our accompanist, but our music director for some 37 years. Next to him is Paul Storm. Paul has been our guitarist for over 25 years. Before that, he was a kid on the program back in the days when I was a kid on the program, and that was a few years ago. And uh, next to, to Paul is a kid on the program. Josh is one of our choir, but we've kind of given him a new job these last months on our concerts, and he'll be at the drums. Behind me is the Cousins Choir. Uh, they number some 25 in number, and uh, they rehearse every Wednesday after school. We tape every Saturday, and once a year we head out on a tour like this. And then throughout the rest of the year, every other week or so of the month, we're out in concerts just like this in Michigan and nearby states. But it's great to get out on the road and share the good news of Jesus Christ. And you know what? Children's Bible Hour has been doing just that for 50 years. And one of the things that has made our program so very unique is that we are kids telling kids about the love of God. Listen as the choir tells us about it. Kids tell kids about the love of Jesus. Kids tell kids about the Lord. Kids tell kids the way to be happy and what we're living for. If you want to be happy, don't want to be blue, ask the Lord to live in you. And join the kids tell kids tell kids about the Thank you, choir. That's us. That's what we're really all about. 
And the wonderful thing of it is that through the years, God has used a lot of little kids to share the news with other kids. Mark, come on up here. Mark is six years old now, started singing on Children's Bible Hour when he was just three years old. And he's going to tell us one of the lessons that we've been teaching kids for 50 years. Kids, you don't have to wait until you're grown up to be what Jesus wants you to be. You can use your little feet to take big steps right now. Mark, you sing it for us, all right? My feet are small. It takes me a while. Sometimes it seems a block is a mile. But little is much. Jesus loves me. I've got big steps, little feet. Thank you, Mark. Big steps, little feet. So kids, remember, you don't have to be all grown up to serve the Lord. But you know what? You do have, a, have to have a good attitude about it all. And this is another one of the lessons that we've been teaching kids for 50 years. Hey, I want everybody who's 10 years old and younger, stick your lower lip way out for me. Way out there, yeah. Way out there. Way out there. All right, now, now hold it out there, at least for the first verse of this song. You'll see what I mean when Chris and Melissa sing all about a disease called the poochie lip disease. Listen. King Ahab went walking in royal garments grand. He saw a lovely vineyard while gazing o'er the land. He said, I've got to have it, I always get my way. But when he could not get it, he pouted all the day. The poochie lip will get you if you don't wash out. The poochie lip will get you if you start to pout. So take this little tip, please control that lower lip, and chase away the poochie lip disease. The king went to his bedroom, he looked so sad and blue. He slammed the door behind him and loudly cried woo-hoo. He said, nobody loves me and fell down on his bed. If I can't have the vineyard, I won't eat any bread. The poochie lip will get you if you don't watch out. The poochie lip will get you if you start to pout. So take this little tip, please control that lower lip, and chase away the poochie lip disease. Now if you are a beggar, or if you are a king, I'm sure you will discover no man has everything. Whenever you're unhappy, recall this little tip. Remember silly Ahab, and don't stick out that lip. The poochie lip will get you if you don't watch out. The poochie lip will get you if you start to pout. So take this little tip, please control that lower lip, and chase away the poochie lip disease. 
Chase away that poochie lip disease. All right, if you haven't put it back yet, you can put it back right now, okay? Last evening, we were in the rolling hills around Baltic, Ohio. And then this morning, we took off for Chambersburg, and I learned a lesson. The church had sent us directions how to get here. Did we follow those directions? Well, for part of the journey, we did. But it certainly looked like uh, Highway 30 was a nice, from Breezewood to Chambersburg, much closer than going all the way up to the next exit and down. And then we, uh-huh, you folks know what I'm gonna say, don't you? Well, it's a perfect lead-in to the next song, believe me. We travel on a big bus, and that big bus lumbered up one mountain after another, and finally, that big bus broke down, and we had to borrow about 30 gallons of water and pour it into that thing and let it cool off before we finished the journey. But you know something? I don't care how high the mountains are. I don't care how great the obstacles are. And boy, I tell you, I was sitting off to the side of that road about two and a half hours before this program was to begin, wondering, now, Lord, what do you have in store for us now? But God's love is greater than any mountain we can face. And that's one of the lessons we've been teaching kids for 50 years. Hey, kids, you're not always going to have an easy road. We didn't have an easy road this afternoon. You're not always going to have a rosy path, but God's love remains the same as you grow up. Here to tell us about it in their song are our trio, Tanya, Rachel, and Julianne. No mountain high enough to separate me from God. Thank you, ladies. And kids, that is a wonderful lesson to learn. My goodness. Melissa, have you been monkeying around again? Well, kind of. Harry wondered if he could help me with my song. This is Harry. Yep. I want you to know it's true. This is true. My brother's name is Harry. Uh -oh. This is not my brother. Right? Are you sure? Hey, that was not in the script, young lady. <laughs> well, I tell you, you never know what these kids are going to come up with. Well, all right, all right, why don't you get yourself all settled while I tell these people what this song is all about. Another lesson that we've been teaching kids for 50 years is, hey, you belong to God. You're not here by chance. You're not here by evolution. You didn't descend from a monkey or a gorilla, even one named Harry. You are special. You are a creation of God. You're a K-I-D, not a monkey. Now get your face out behind here. Some people say that all mankind came from apes way back in time. Well, I admit I climb up trees. I swing from a branch with the greatest ease. But that doesn't prove a thing, no. say the Bible's wrong. My first mom and dad looked like old King Kong. Well, I confess, my banana's 
right. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you, Harry, anytime. All right, good. We're, we're always glad for uh, any help that we can get. No, we do not belong to the evolutionists. We didn't get here by chance. We are here by God's decree. And if we've trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, we can say, I'm yours, Lord. That's the idea behind this song that Jonathan has ready. It's simply another lesson that we've been teaching kids for 50 years. They need to make a choice. Who are you going to belong to, kids? As you grow up, are you going to follow Satan? Or are you going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Jonathan has some good verses and then a song. And I want you to listen to the song carefully because when he's done, we want you to sing along on the chorus. Hey, we were in the back listening to you sing. You've got some good singers here. If our bus was big enough, we'd put you all on it and take you with us on the rest of the tour. But you get ready to sing the chorus, so listen to the words. Jonathan, do it for us. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm yours, Lord, everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord, try me now and see, see if I can be completely yours. My life and my love I leave in your hands, I'll gladly perform as your will demands. I know it's not much your gift to repay, but it's all I can give and all I can say is I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see, see if I can be completely yours. You put in us all, these are to belong, to join with your strength and thus become strong. With that thought in mind, I reach for the prize. I lift up my voice to re-emphasize that I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see, see if I can be completely yours. All right, Jonathan, thank you for that good song. Now, if that's your testimony, stand to your feet and let's sing that chorus, all right? I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got, everything I am, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I can be completely yours. That's all that the Lord wants, kids, is just you, the way you are. And he'll make you into what he wants you to be if you just let him have you. All right, let's sing that chorus together twice. I'll try to help you the first time. Here we go. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got. Everything I am. Everything I am. Everything I'm not. Everything I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. See if I One more time. Sing it with all your heart. Here we go. I'm yours. Good singing, thank you, you may be seated, and I trust indeed that is your prayer. Now there's another lesson we've been teaching kids for 50 years, and that is that this life is not the end. Isn't that a wonderful thought? If, if all I was living for was this life, as great as my life is, I've got a wonderful wife and family and I enjoy my job, I sure do, but boy, if this life was all, as Paul said, we'd be of mo all men most miserable. But we have something 
to look forward to. And I believe the Lord Jesus Christ could come even before this service is over and nothing could make me happier. Amen? Amen. Amen. I trust that this is your prayer as well. Now, this is a bright song. I just love it. I tell the instrumentalists, pull out all the stops. Kids, you pull out all the stops. Put on your biggest smile. Now, they haven't had a chance to eat yet. We had to give that up uh, in order to make the service. So I know your stomachs are rumbling, but uh, do it the best you can. I'm going to be gone. Listen. <laughs> gonna be gone is that your testimony is it is that your testimony I trust that it is but now listen kids there's another lesson that you have to remember while you're waiting for the Lord to come and he could come at any time you have to be busy serving him now as I look out over this audience Sherilyn I see lots of kids Boy, wouldn't it be great if we could take a camera and look down inside of each one of you? You see, all I see is brown hair or black hair and freckles and red hair, and I see some men out there who wish they had hair of any kind. <laughs> but you know, we aren't really just what we are on the outside. It's underneath all of these wrappings that miracles are happening, and God wants to use what you are for his glory. Now, this is our Sherilyn. You got your box all in order over there? All right, great. She's going to turn it loose, too, on a song called Underneath Your Wrappings. Listen. Did you know that God does not see the same way you see? That's right. The Bible says that people look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at the heart, and that's what my song is about. You may wear purple polka dots You may like clothes with flower spots You may have funny toes Or freckles stuckled on your nose Or cute sea ears that stick straight out You might have quite humongous feet Or frogs are what you like to eat Yeah! You may be fat or lean, or maybe something in between, but that's not what you're all about. Underneath your wrapping, a miracle is happening, down in the deepest part of you. Underneath your wrapping, a miracle is happening, the supernatural love of God is shining through. You may have straight or curly hair. Your skin may be dark or fair. You may like jelly beans. Your favorite color may be green. You may wish you could visit Mars. You may be bite your fingernails or sometimes wish you had a tail. You could be three feet small, or maybe not that tall at all. But that's not who you really are. Cause underneath your wrapping, a miracle is happening. Down in the deepest part of you. Underneath your wrapping, a miracle is happening. The supernatural love of God is shining through. Just like a present 
heart wrapped in paper and a bow. If you open up your heart, yes, open up your heart, everyone will know that underneath your wrapping, a miracle is happening down in the deepest parts of you. Underneath your wrapping, a miracle is happening. The supernatural love of God is shining through. Beyond all explanation, oh, the supernatural love of God is shining through. Yes! All right. Thank you, Sherilyn. Now, my mother always told me if I ha made a mess, I had to clean it up. So if you wouldn't mind cleaning up your mess and moving it over there, I would appreciate it very much. Well, now, what do we have? A, a visitor from the audience? Well, hello there. What's your name? Lori. Lori Lee. Do you know who this girl is over here that just sang? Who is she? Sarah and my sister. Oh, that's your sister. Well, she made a real mess over there, didn't she, huh? Did she make a mess at home, too? No? Do you make a mess at home sometimes? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love your honesty. I really do. Well, you know, one of the lessons that we have been teaching kids for 50 years is the fact that Jesus knows all about you because he once was a child just like you. Now, last night when she was singing her song, you know what she got in the middle of her song? She got the hiccups and just made it through without any problem at all. <laughs> and afterward I said, you know, I wonder if Jesus ever hiccuped. I'll bet he did. And he coughed too. Yeah. Jesus knows when you don't feel good because <laughs> there were times when he didn't. Now, Jesus didn't do that because he didn't wear a dress. <laughs> I, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he didn't. But listen, before we get too carried away, you better sing your song. Jesus was a child like me. Sing it for us, okay? Jesus was a child like me When he fell, he scraped his knee His mouth shoe was hurt And clean out all the dirt Jesus was a child like me Jesus was a child like you His parents to me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know what? You missed the middle verse about run. So how about Jesus liked to run and play? Do you think you could sing that one? Sure. Do that one for us. Jesus, Jesus loved to run and play. He could run and play all day. But sometimes he would cry. A tear was in his eye. Jesus was a child like me. All right. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Go sit down by Sherilyn for a little while. Uh, uh, Laura Lee is just three years old. And we thank God for not only the kids, but also for the dedicated parents. We have several of them along on a trip like that. I wouldn't make it. <laughs> I wouldn't make it without them. But I'll tell you, I'm a grandpa now. Got six of them. And I wouldn't mind having one like her. She sits on my knee every once in a while on the bus, and I get a big kiss on the face, and I like that. Jesus was once a child like you. So, kids, that's why Jesus knows all about you, because he once was the same age you are right now. So for 50 years, these are the lessons we've been sharing with kids all over the world. But the choir sums it up in their song. It's really our testimony to you. God loves you, we love you. That's the way it should be. Listen. Yeah. 
shepherds came to the virgin born baby and worshipped at the angel's call. He proved that God loves you and I love you and that's the way it should be. God loves you and I love you and that's the way it will be. The Messiah grew and then he knew he was the son of God. He healed the sick. Yes, God loves you, and we love you. And as I said, that's the message we've been sharing with boys and girls all over the world for 50 years. Last night, we met a young lady named Carol Baker. She's 16 years old. She lived in Colorado and tried to come to see us when we were on tour out that way a number of years ago, and she got sick. Then we came to Ohio. She moved to Ohio in the meantime. And last night, she and her family traveled for over two hours to make it to our program. The interesting thing is that uh, Carol gave up a whole week of camp to be with us last night. And when she told me she was going to do that in a letter some months ago, I wrote to her and I said, Carol, are you sure you want to give up a whole week of camp just to come and meet us? And I got the most beautiful letter that said in part, very likely, if it were not for you and Children's Bible Hour, I would not be a Christian today. How we thank God for the way he has allowed our ministry to touch the lives of boys and girls for 50 years. At present, we're on more stations than at any time in our history, 670 stations carrying one or more of our three English programs, Children's Bible Hour, Half Hour, Story Time, which is 15 minutes, daily in some areas, weekly in other areas, and then Keys for Kids, our four-and-a-half-minute broadcast, which is aired on many, many stations around the world, six days a week. But then in these last years, God has allowed us to expand beyond the borders of the United States. And today we have a program in the Mandarin dialect of Chinese every week. We have a broadcast in the Alango dialect in the Philippines every week. We're responsible for supplying materials and finances for that particular broadcast. Several years ago, we began a Spanish program once a week. It's now on 178 radio stations in South and Central America and here in the United States as well. And then just a year ago, this past month, we began a broadcast in the Romanian language. It's carried by Transworld Radio and also some local stations in Romania. The man that does our broadcast recently came back from Romania. He was overseeing the distribution of some 100,000 keys for kids in the Romanian language, another one of the ministries God has given us. He was taking some of the keys for kids across the border from what was Soviet Moldavia into Romania. The guard stopped him, talked to him, and he started talking to them, and suddenly one of the guards looked at him and said, you, you are the one we hear on the radio. And he called the other guards over. And he had an opportunity to share the gospel with them one-on-one. -on -one. These are opportunities that we little dreamed of just a few years ago. And right now we're working on a broadcast in the Russian language. Hopefully we'll have something on the air by the end of this year if God allows it. 
Now, one way we're able to have all the ministries that God has given us, as far as radio, as far as our videos, and our flashcards, and our tapes, and we'll be telling you a little bit more about these materials in a few moments, and then our print ministry, the Keys for Kids. How many of you have used one of our Keys for Kids? Let me see your hands. Our daily devotional? Oh, yes, all over the auditorium. Wonderful. We're printing 40,000 every other month. In English we have two books in Spanish we just finished a second book in Portuguese we're working on a book in Russian and Arabic and then I mentioned the Romanian keys for kids the only way that we're able to have this kind of a ministry is if people like you will pray and then give to make it possible for us to continue our ministry now I want to do something if you are 10 years of age and younger stand up for a moment 10 years of age and younger stand up all over the auditorium all right, now, wave your hands at me like this. If you're 10 years of age and younger, wave your hands at me now. Parents, look around at you. Look at that sea of waving hands. Thank you, kids. You may put them down. That helped to get a few of the wiggles out, too. But you know something? Those who are our audience are not able to support our ministry. How many of you kids that just raised your hand and said you were 10 years of age and younger have got uh, $100 to put in the offering tonight? Oh, you do, buddy, hey, all right. Yeah, mom just went, mm. yeah. But you see, that's our problem. The kids that we're reaching don't have the money that makes it possible for us to continue. Our postage bill alone runs us close to $4,000 every week just to send out our mail. And that's just one of the many items of expense that we have. And yet God has been faithful, and our ministry is continuing. These last months, it's been a real struggle between our income and expenses, but we are trusting God to give us the wisdom that we do not act on presumption and carry on things that he doesn't want us to do, but yet at the same time, not lag behind. These opportunities in Russia and Romania, we don't know how long those doors will be open. Now, tonight, you're going to be given an opportunity to give to the ministry of Children's Bible Hour. You're not giving to me. You're not giving to these kids. These kids serve without pay of any kind, as do their parents. We do have a full-time staff and a part-time staff that we remunerate. But what you give will help us to reach boys and girls with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we do need your help. If you wish to make out a check, you can make it out to Children's Bible Hour, or I'm sure if you have already made it out to the church, uh, this offering will go to our ministry. And we promise to use it wisely and carefully in the furtherance of the gospel. One of the unique things about the Children's Bible Hour ministry is that we use kids to tell kids about the Lord Jesus Christ. They can start as young as possible, Laurelie's age and even younger. But when they hit the ninth grade, they have to graduate. That makes room for the younger ones. And Ravi is one of those who is graduating this summer from Children's Bible Hour. Ravi started when he was just in the second grade. He auditioned in the second grade, joined in the third grade, and has been with us now through the ninth grade. Now, Ravi usually just sings in the choir, but recently started playing the trumpet and Ravi also is a good man at the keyboard. And as you listen to the accompaniment track for the song he's going to play right now, he did all of the arranging and the accompanying on his own home keyboard and brought it in. We put it on tape and said, Ravi, do an offertory for us. We'd like to hear it right now. All right, Rav? Let's stand and let's sing a chorus called This Is The Day. Now, while you're standing and at attention and your ears are all pricked up, 
the choir's going to sing this song through one time, and then we're going to divide you in half and have you sing it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. This side over here be team number one, and you'll be team number two. Not because you can't sing as well as this group over here. It's just that somebody has to be second, all right? You start, and remember there's a part where we all sing together. Sing it. This is the day. people said amen. amen thank you you may be seated now you know over the years we've had a lot of just songs that are kind of fun songs that still teach a lesson mark come on up here this is a song from mary rice hopkins that we like do you know i believe that god has a sense of humor i mean just look at me look at some of the people god has created but look at some of the animals god has made think about that hippopotamus I think that's kind of a funny looking animal, don't you? Mark, you tell us all about that hip, 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 hippopotamus, all right? In the beginning, God made the sea. In the forest filled with trees, he made the mountains up so high. On the very top, he placed the sky. God's finger are everywhere just to show how much he cares and in between he had loads of fun he made a hippo who weighs a ton hip 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 hippopotamus hip hip hooray God made all of us hip 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 hippopotamus hip hip hooray Hip, hip, hooray, God made us. We're not here by accident. Well, Laura Lee, my goodness, it looks like you've got a whole bunch of things to share. Now, we do have fun songs, but they always have a lesson. How many of you have a garden and bunnies come and steal things out of that garden? Oh, boy, I see hands all over. They're going to know exactly what you're singing about in the bunny song. Sing it for us, all right? Hey, you better get all your bunnies. 
I see your sister is teaching you well to make a mess. Now get them, get them all in there, in the basket. Okay, one, two. You don't have to worry too much that they're just right the way they are. Then put your basket underneath there, and remember, Mommy wants you in the back, okay? Last night, she didn't really want to go back in the back, you know. And uh, somehow kids have little minds of their own. <laughs> Isn't that uh, great that kids have a mind of their own? You, you, you got it all? All right, really good. Well, now Chris and Melissa look like they're up to something as well. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, just throw the rabbit back in. Yeah. <laughs> right. We, yeah, bunnies are hard to control as well. <laughs> now, Chris and Melissa are going to represent the fact that our ministry is worldwide. But they're also going to represent the fact that we teach boys and girls there's only one person who can really change your life, and that is Jesus. Listen. Mary, Mary, Jesus' friend, had no hope when she began. She was a sinner like you and me, Wondered how she'd end up be. Then Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he takes our sin and strife. And Jesus, he changed our lives. Matthew, Matthew, publican, very rich, cause he tax man, taking much more than his share. He really didn't care. Then Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he takes our sin and strife. And Jesus, he changed our lives. Peter, Peter, fisherman, catching fish as fast he can. He had temper pretty bad. Especially when he get mad. Then Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he takes our sin and strife. And Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he changed our lives. Jesus, he changed the life. Has he changed your life? Have you trusted him as Savior? Well, if you have, you're not perfect. You won't be until you get to heaven. You know, maybe there are some kids out there who say, well, Jesus, he changed my life, but there's still a lot of things that are wrong. Listen, God's going to work at you little by little by little. Now, this song is going to be on our brand new album. We just recorded it for Child Evangelism Fellowship. They're going to put out a songbook. We're going to put out the tape. It'll be out this fall. And this is a beautiful song from that new album, Little by Little. Listen.
Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, choir. <laughs> little by little, Jesus is changing us. See, Uncle Charlie. Yes. Do you have a best friend? Do I have a best friend? Well, my my wife is my very, very best friend. Yes, I have many friends, and I, and I have several that I would call best friends. Yes. Best friends are sure neat, mm -hmm. aren't they? But unfortunately, sometimes they let you down. Mm. That's true, because even, well, friends aren't perfect. Nobody's perfect. Even best friends fail us sometimes. But you know, there's one friend who will never let us down, and I think we all know who that is. And you have a grown-up song that tells us all about it. Why don't you sing it for us? When it comes to building friendships, we are much the same. A little bit uncertain at the thought of change. But remember, friendships truly start when bridges span from heart to heart. So even when you're far apart, the love remains the best of friends, the forever twined. The best of friends will never change with time. When you look beyond tomorrow, there's a love that will not end. Jesus offers nothing less. He wants to be the best of friends. There are friends who say they love you, and you know it's true. And others who will notice when you're feeling blue. But there's only one who truly sees inside your heart, yet still believes in all. The best of friends, the forever kind. The best of friends, he'll never change with time. When we look beyond tomorrow, there's a love that never ends. Jesus offers nothing less, he wants to be the best of friends. Thank you, Sherilyn. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful words in that song. Kids, Jesus wants to be your very best friend. But once you know him as Savior, he wants his love to flow through you out to others. That's the idea behind this song by the trio. And when they get done, we want to get you involved again. We want you to sing the chorus and let it be your testimony. Let your love flow through me. Listen. Let your love flow through me.
All right, let's uh, sing that. You can remain seated this time as long as you promise to sing your best. And let this song just run through your mind all this week. Let your love flow through me. Let your love flow through me. Make me a blessing, Lord, wherever I may be. Keep me pure. Oh, kids, that's a prayer we need to pray every day. Keep me pure, keep me clean so that you might be seen. Let your love, let your love flow through me. Let's sing it through twice. I'll kind of help you the first time, but everyone try. All right, here we go. Let your love flow through me. Thank you, and I trust that that indeed is your prayer. Kids, as you're on the playgrounds this summer and the swimming pools and in the neighborhood and men and women at your workplace, let's make this our prayer because I believe that the world around us would be different if every one of us who names the name of Christ would let the love of Jesus flow through us. Now, we end every broadcast with a story, and we're going to wind up with a short story in just a moment. I would imagine the majority of you here tonight know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, but we're not going to assume that. We've already shared the gospel in many of our songs, but our story especially is going to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and ask you a very important question. Do you know him? To get us ready for the story, Jonathan sings a beautiful old song called Longing for Jesus. I have a longing in my heart for Jesus. I have a longing just to hold his hand. To know he's there forever near to guide me. To know his love will never let me go. Longing, longing for Jesus, I have a longing in my heart for Him. Just to be near Him, to feel His presence, I have a longing in my heart for Him. To you who do not know this man named Jesus, us. You've never lived or found life's greatest joy. Oh, won't you now take him as Lord and Savior and know the fullness of his matchless love? Longing, longing for Jesus, I have a longing in my heart just to be near him to feel his presence i have a longing in my heart for him thank you jonathan <laughs> keep the words of that song in mind as we have the story now we're going to do our story much like we would in our sound studio back in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And we tape a, a story just about every week. And uh, we have uh, sound effects that are fed in from the control room, and our good sound man, Dan Baumgarten, will be doing that. Dan, by the way, Paul will be using the microphone up here rather than this one over here. Just a little technical aside there. Got to keep everything, you know, I mean, that's just like in our studio. We have to tell the sound man which mic to turn on, which one to turn off, and so forth. And uh, some of the kids from the choir are going to help with the story. In fact, the kids in the choir are going to make a little bit of noise. In fact, we better practice that. Are you able to make any noise? Let's hear you do a little talking, all right? Oh, 
Oh, I think you could do better than that. You do a lot better than that on the bus. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, that, that's enough for now. But now, hey, we want you to help. When you hear a certain sound, we want you to cheer. How many of you have ever been to a ball game in a big league park? All right, you're going to a ball game in a big league park. You're going to Three River Stadium. Yeah, and you're going to watch somebody play ball. And somebody's going to hit a home run. And when they do, you're going to cheer. Uh, Mr. Ken, that little machine down there does about everything. Can you hit a ball with that? Uh, no, not shoot a gun. Hit a ball. Try it. Well, we'll pretend. Uh, do it once more. Now, when you hear that sound, you are going to cheer. Let's practice it. All right? Everybody that's 12 and under. Old people, we don't want you to cheer. We don't want all the kids to cheer. See how much noise you can make, kids. Can you make noise for me? All right, here we go. Good job, good job, we'll hire you. All right, now, that's the only time you can make noise, though, all right? Because the recording light is going to go on, and we're going to start the recording of our story. Now, I hope you'll enjoy watching us do this the way we would in our sound studio in Grand Rapids. But much more than just enjoy it and getting into it and participating, listen carefully to the message. There's a great deal of difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus personally. That's what the story is all about. Our story today, written especially for the Children's Bible Hour by Jan Hansen, is entitled, Do You Know Him? One day, when baseball season was at its best, Mr. Phillips brought his class to order with this announcement. Good morning, class. I'd like you to meet Todd Martin. Todd, this is our first day at school for you, and we'd like to hear a little bit about you and what you've done before you've come to our school. Um, my name's Todd Martin. I have three sisters. My dad's a professor at the State University. I like to play ball and go fishing, and we live in the old Sumter place, and I guess that's about it. Well, that's great, Todd. Does anyone have a question to ask Todd? Yes, Jeff. Where'd you come from, Todd? Winecote, Pennsylvania. Winecote, Pennsylvania? Yeah, that's right. Why, that's the hometown of Will Smith, the baseball star. Yeah, I know. Do you know him? Sure I know him. He's won three World Series. Do you really know him? Sure, I have his autograph on my baseball. Tell me more about him, Todd. I'm afraid that'll have to wait for a little long later, boys. We have to get started on our history lesson right now. Please turn to page 247 in your books. As soon as it was lunchtime, Jeff ran over to Todd's desk. Come on, Todd. I'm captain of the ball team. How about playing with us? Good, I'd like that. So you know with Smith, huh? Yeah, I have all his baseball cards. My bedroom wall is covered with posters of him. Do you remember that game in Pittsburgh when he hit a grand slam home run in the ninth inning? I sure do. That was so exciting. I saw the game on TV. I saw him play in person. Wow. Maybe you can go with me sometime to see him play. Super. I'd love that. Well, it didn't take long for Jeff to make it over to Todd's house to see his collection of posters cards, and other baseball items. So this is the autograph ball, huh? That's it. You sure weren't fooling, Todd. You do know Wilt Smith. Sure I know him. See his baseball books? He's taught me all I know about baseball. You're a good batter, too. Come on, Jeff. Let's go outside and play ball. I'll show you what I know. I'm ready. Home run's on the way. <laughs> Jeff and Todd became really close friends, almost inseparable ones. Hey, if they weren't playing ball, they were talking ball and making plans to see Wilt Smith play. One Sunday, Jeff arrived early at Sunday school and shared his excitement with his teacher. Good morning, Mr. Jones. Well, good morning, Jeff. Hey, how are things going for you, buddy? Really good. Guess what? What? I'm going to meet Wilt Smith. Not the baseball star. That's him, all right. Are you surprised? Oh, yes, I am. My friend Todd knows Wilt. Wow. He got us tickets to see him play, 
at Three Rivers Stadium. Mm. His dad is taking um, us. We'll stay overnight there. Just think, I'll get to shake Wilt's hand. You will? Hey, that's great, Jeff. You know Wilt's a pretty famous person. Yeah, and Todd knows him. He'll introduce me to Wilt. Sounds like a wonderful opportunity. But Jeff, I've been wondering. Well, since we're talking about knowing Wilt, I'm wondering if you know the Lord Jesus. Sure I know Jesus. He's God's only son. But do you really know Jesus yourself? Of course I do. He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. Mm. Jeff, are you in there? Yeah, Phil. Hi, Jeff. Oh, hi, Mr. Jones. Hi, Phil. Hope I didn't interrupt anything. No, I was just telling him about my trip. You must be really excited. I am. I can hardly wait. It's time for class already. Let's sit over by the windows. Well, Jeff and Todd joined 40,000 other fans in Three Rivers Stadium to see Wilt Smith play in a big league game. In the last inning, with the score tied, Wilt came up to bat. Here comes the ball, Wilt. Smack it! He should have hit it. He will this time. Come on, Wilt. Come on, you can do it. Jeff, people can't just go storming in there. Well, we can. You know Will. You can get us in. I don't know him that good. Even if I knew him real well, we probably couldn't get in there now. Well, you can introduce me to him later then, can't you? If we hang around long enough? No, I don't know him good enough for that. You mean, you mean I won't get to meet him? I can't believe it. And you told me you knew him. Have you actually ever met him? Well... <laughs> Well, good morning, Jeff. Hey, buddy, tell me about your trip. It was okay. Just okay? I heard on the news that Wilt won the game with a home run. Yeah, he did. Well, you don't sound very happy about it. Uh, did, uh, did something go wrong? It sure did. Hmm. You don't sound too happy. Uh, you you, you want to talk a little bit more about it? Well, Todd told me he knew Will, mm -hmm. but he didn't really know him. He just knew about him. Everything he knew about Will came from reading books or watching his games. Mm. He sure had me fooled. How could he say he knew Will when he never met him in person? Well, Jeff, a lot of people are just like Todd. Often they say that they know a person when they just know about him. Well, I would never do that. You know, there are many people who claim to know Christ. They read about his miracles. They hear about his death on the cross. They, they talk about him. They may even go to church. They can quote his words from the Bible. They try to follow his example, but they don't really know Jesus. Oh, sure, they know about him. But they don't know Jesus personally. They've never invited him into their hearts to be their Savior. Now, I wonder, Jeff, do you just know about Jesus? Or do you know him personally as your own Savior? I, I guess I've been just as foolish as Todd. I've known about Jesus all my life. And I guess I thought that was enough. But now I want to know him personally. Will you show me how I can really know Jesus as my Savior? I certainly will, Jeff. He's the best friend you could ever know.
Do you know him or just know about him? There's a great deal of difference. Has there been a time when you have acknowledged that you are a sinner? Said, Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again from the dead for me. And right now, I trust you as my Savior. If not, whether you're a boy or girl, whether you're a young person, whether you're an older one here, you can do that this very moment. I invite you to bow your heads with me, every head bowed and every eye closed. And I'm going to pray just a simple prayer, a line at a time. And if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Now, God is so great, he even hears our very thoughts. So you don't need to pray this prayer out loud. But if you have never done this, I urge you to do it. And you'll go from knowing just about Jesus to knowing him personally as your Savior. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I know I have done bad things. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose again from the dead for me. And right now, the best I know how, I tell you I'm sorry for my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and life and be my Savior. Now, if you prayed that prayer, and if you really meant it, Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you called, you can be sure God did his part. Now you need to tell somebody about it. Maybe you'd like to tell the person that you came with. I'll be down here in front for a while afterwards. Maybe when you come by to say hi, you'd like to say, Uncle Charlie, I prayed that prayer with you. I'd be glad to know about it. And there are others here, the pastor staff, that would be more than happy to sit down with any of you and share further the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let's quietly sing that little song together that the choir just sang, Into My Heart. Singing. We want to thank you for coming tonight. I know that many of you traveled many miles to get here. We have that at every one of our tour meetings, and we're so delighted. That's why we'll be around for a little while afterwards. If you'd like to come down, identify yourself, we would love to meet you. Now, Pastor is going to come in just a moment, but I want you to stand together, and I want you to join the choir in singing our theme song, Boys and Girls for Jesus. And then some from the choir are going to slip out, and that's why they'll be going away from the choir to help with the materials right afterwards. But let's sing our theme song together before Pastor comes with closing words. 